Model steam engines for beginners. Part 27. Working on vintage steam toys can be difficult. Take your time and be very careful. If you inadvertently destroy any of the parts during the rebuild, then the parts will have to be remanufactured, and this defeats the object of a sympathetic restoration, so be very careful not to destroy the original parts if possible. The first thing to do is to take a close look at the engine and see what needs doing. Inside the firebox is a small spirit burner. Fairly rusty with no wicks, but that's an easy fix. The filling method's a bit unusual. Normally on a spirit burner you'd have a cap that you remove. But with this I think you just put the spirit in the top part of the tin and the spirit finds its way into the tank through the hole in the centre. This engine is in a very, very bad condition. Look at the flywheel, it's slightly out of alignment. I don't do much work on steam toys as a rule, but a gentleman came to see me and he wants me to fix this because it's a bit of a family heirloom. At first I said, well, it's not really worth it, it's going to cost more than it's worth, but he wasn't bothered. He said, it means a lot to him, so therefore I will repair it. If you're of a nervous disposition, I would look away now. Look at the state of the crankshaft bearing. It's a bit on the loose side. And to say it's badly worn is an understatement. It's terrible. I think you could say that this is a mechanical disaster area. It's never a good idea to use a steel crankshaft in a steel bearing, because it will wear rapidly, especially if it's deprived of oil. The entire mounting assembly for the cylinder and the crankshaft is very loose as well, as it's only held to the firebox using two rivets, and the firebox is made from very thin material. So I've got my small green box at the ready and all the parts are going into here. Quite a few parts are missing and what is there is not particularly good, but I can rebuild this. And it's probably going to be quite interesting because I don't normally work on models of this type. Everything has to come off. This is a steam pipe which has become unsoldered from the cylinder, so that's simple enough. Then the other valve at the other side is the whistle valve, which is incomplete. And now they're removed, it's looking better already. So what shall I do with this bent crankshaft? It appears to be simply threaded into the slip eccentric mechanism at the right hand side. So by rotating the flywheel, it just unscrews. So what is a slip eccentric mechanism, I hear you ask, as the piston valve falls out of the cylinder? Well, slip eccentric is a simple way to reverse an engine. All you have to do is rotate the crankshaft in the direction that you want the engine to go, and open the steam valve. Then if you want it to go backwards, you stop the engine, rotate the crankshaft in the opposite direction, open the steam valve again, and the engine goes in reverse. And here's a close-up shot of the slip eccentric mechanism. I'll show how it works in detail once I put it all back together. This is a curious thing. It's like a patch on the front of the firebox, and as you can see, the firebox is a little bit uneven. I'm assuming that at some time this was a nameplate that had the manufacturer's name on it, but alas, it's been painted over a long, long time ago. Time now to carefully remove the cylinder which is held in place with two brass bolts. The next job is to remove the bracket that holds the cylinder and the crankshaft. And as I said earlier, this bracket is mounted to the firebox area of the steam engine, which is made of very thin metal so I'm taking great care not to distort it or deform it any more than it's already deformed. In this clip I'm using a small needle file to flatten off the top of the rivets on the outside of the bracket. When I get them flat enough I'm going to drill them out with a small drill. This job takes a while, and a bit of patience is definitely required here. Even though the steel bracket is very loose, under no circumstances must you do this. I'm making it look a lot worse than it is by the way. What I need to do is further weaken the rivets before I can drill them out. So a bit more needle filing is in order, followed by using a centre drill in my excellent small Bosch electric drill. The initial idea is to weaken the rivet as much as possible. That's one down and one to go. So now using a screwdriver to very, very gently prise it off, I can clearly see what the problem is. Over the years, these two mounting holes in the firebox area have become enlarged and distorted and that coupled with the fact that the firebox area of this engine is a bit dinted and a bit uneven round the edges means that it needs a bit of major surgery. So I'm detaching the entire boiler and firebox assembly from the base. And this assembly is held to the base with four steel bolts. 
As I said earlier, I'm really not into steam toys, so I don't know what this engine is. It's either a Joseph Falk, or it could be a Doll, or it could be any other kind of German engine from the same period. I may as well start with reshaping the firebox. As you can see, it's a bit bent, it's a bit all over the place. There's quite a lot of distortion in various areas of this, so I need to put this right, and I'm going to do that by using this large piece of steel that's also on the bench. The piece of steel bar is almost as big as the firebox, but not quite. And in this clip, you can see what I'm doing with the steel bar. It's in my vice in the outer part of the workshop clamp very tightly, and I can move the firebox around the bar and tap it back into the correct shape. And I'm starting the job by reprofiling the mounting holes where the rivets went through to hold the bracket to the firebox. When doing a job like this, you have to be very, very careful. Don't put too much pressure on the work, otherwise the metal will stretch and really distort, then you will have a problem. I'm using a small hammer and making very light impacts on the work. I'm speeding up the job because it took quite a long time and you can see how I'm managing to straighten the firebox without distorting it. The holes have gone back to round and they look okay. In this clip I'm just working my way around the firebox removing any dints. As I hammer my way around the firebox the paint's getting chipped off and it's quite difficult to see which parts are level and which parts aren't so I'm using some emery cloth to remove the paint so I can accurately see the shape of the firebox. When you're doing a job like this, you must use very light hammer blows and plenty of them. It's difficult sometimes when I'm doing a job like this because the easiest thing to do would be just to make a complete new firebox assembly. And I could get it to look just about the same as this, but the problem is it would no longer be original. This old boiler has had steam fittings in the top for a long time and it's been knocked about a bit so all the holes are not level, they're all a little bit wonky. I'm doing two jobs at once here. I'm trying to find out what the thread is in the top of the boiler. I'm pretty certain that this thread is metric as this is a German engine but 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch is very close to the metric fine that's been used in the first place. And while this tap is in the hole I just move it slightly to straighten out the top of the boiler. This is not a recommended job by the way, don't do it this way. The way I normally address this problem is to thread a piece of steel bar to the right thread that goes into the boiler. Then I screw the steel bar into the bush at the top of the boiler and lever it back into the right position. An unorthodox method perhaps, but effective. That's it for this episode, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.